everyone, this is David Stark from WatcherPass.com, your website for movie reviews, interviews, and recommendations. Today I'm joined by Megan Holder, who plays D in the all-new drama, If Not Now, When. We're going to talk to Megan in just a second, but first let's check out the trailer, and while you're watching, if you can like and subscribe to this channel, that would be fantastic. It helps me out a lot. Thank you. I put myself out there. I put myself out there and was open to love. No, you put out before prom and got played. She's kind of right. You were kind of a fast yes. ass. Mom! Why are you here? I'm here because she's my friend. Talk to me. I'm miserable. I keep telling myself it'll get better. I am my circumstances and neither are you. I've put family before my dream. I want both. Let's bask in this. Love is still in this. Hey, Megan. Hi. How's it going? Good. How are you? I'm doing well. Thanks so much for joining me. Thanks this is Megan. Having- oh, of course. This is Megan Holder. She plays D in the all-new drama "If Not Now, When." Um, it's it's available early next year on January 8th, so you can kind of start your 2021 off right. Um, and Megan's character is uh, she's a dancer in the film, uh, so that was that was kind of an interesting. A background for you. Um, I guess the first question is, how did you find this film? It was such a such an interesting, you know, concept and, and such a such a fantastic cast. Uh, I just want to know how you got attached to it. Very. I uh, got the script, uh, read it, loved it. I actually read for a different character. I read for uh, Makia's character, <laughs> um, and then they came back and offered me the role of Deirdre, and I was thrilled. I kind of I connected with Deirdre just anyway, like personality wise. I find her a lot of the comic relief and some of the tensious moments in the film amongst the other characters. Um, and I actually danced as well um, in my past. Uh, so yeah, so that's how I came to it um, by way of reading for a different character. I was gonna say, so <laughs> yeah, Deirdre sounds actually kind of like a better, like, I mean, I don't know, I, I don't know what your, the rest of your background is, but it sounds like a perfect fit for you. So yeah, I guess that makes yeah, perfect sense. It was. They had a vision. <laughs> yeah, Megan and Cameron knew. <laughs> Yeah, I was going to ask if you'd read for anyone else, but uh, yeah, that's that's awesome. I'm glad that they were able yeah. to kind of you know work you in, and it, it seemed like everyone, you know, all the characters really kind of fit together very well. It was it was such a fun, well, fun might be, not be the right word, but it was it was such a good dramatic cast, and, and kind of everyone meshed really well. So that was a uh, yeah, we had really really good chemistry um, naturally. Um, I think that Megan and and Tamara were such good directors. Um, they encouraged that, but also they just naturally were that. They were so passionate about it that we all came in wanting to do a really good job and we all just clicked really well. Yeah, that's awesome. Cause it, yeah, the chemistry was really kind of apparent and it was really fun to see. Uh, and it felt, it felt natural, right? Like what I liked most about this film, you know, is you've got a lot of, of dramatic elements, but they felt, you know, a little more, maybe more true to life than I think some of the stuff you see from Hollywood. Like some of the emotions felt... You know, they, they weren't as exaggerated as you'd see in like a Hollywood film. They felt more real and raw. And I think that, you know, is a testament to your acting and also to uh, the, the director's vision and, and, and their writing. So I agree. Thank you. Yeah, I think the writing was so great. And I found that even in the most emotional moments of whatever that character, whatever they were going through, was at their kind of peak, whether they were admitting something or breaking down over something or trying to heal from something or saying sorry it all was coming from a very realistic place like you said and I think all of the scenarios each of the character went through each of the characters went through are real life things Mm -hmm. it's nothing that seems like outlandish it's something that you know we all have someone in our lives that's been through a similar thing as every character in the film yeah definitely I think you know the way I kind of thought of it is like these characters even though they're going through a lot, and as you said, they're breaking down or they're, they're very emotional, they still come from a place of strength. So it's, you know, they still have that inherent in what they're saying. So, you know, everything's going, you know, everything might be going south for them or they might, it might be going great, but they still are kind of strong characters and trying to kind of live their life. So that was a- Very much so, getting was, through. I think this year is like a testament to humanity. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, it's like this year, even though the film was made not, you know, it wasn't this year, but I think it just shows that like we get through, you know, like no matter how bad things are, like you just get through it. I think we all have a strength in us. And I think it's so important that you surround yourself with people that help you 
um, which this movie also kind of speaks to, you know, the right kind of friends, the right kind of support system. But I think we're living what you're saying, you know, just that strength to like get through this. Yeah, exactly. It's a, <laughs> the, the theme of this film is kind of like we will overcome. And that does feel like the theme of 2020 as well. So <laughs> <laughs> Mankind is like living the theme of this movie right now. Yeah. Sadly, you know. Yeah, well, we'll, we'll see what 2020 yeah, we'll see what 2021 brings. I guess we'll find yeah. out what the maybe aliens will invade. I mean, I don't know. Who knows? Right. And then, but we'll be able to handle it. Like at this yeah. point, you know, <laughs> bring it um, on. And you kind of mentioned earlier, you know, everyone kind of got along well. I mean, you know, what was it like having that bond form? And has that kind of continued after the film? I mean, have you, do you still keep in contact with your co-stars? Do you all still hang out, um, you know, yeah. outside of? Of regular time yeah we're all still in touch um we all just kind of fell in love with each other genuinely which is a really great feeling because we had to play that on screen so it worked out really well um we were all at Makia's baby shower um <laughs> pregnant in real life in the movie she's pregnant in the film and that was real wow she's um, so but, method that's amazing yeah right you know <laughs> you love this project so much she was just like i got it um yeah but we all really clicked and you can't force that uh, you can't like fabricate it, you know, um, it all just, it really worked. And I'm glad that you can see that on screen because I, I think this film is so much about like the love um, and family that friends can be to you in your life. And I think we showed that, which I'm really happy about. Yeah. yeah and the other you know, great thing about this film is you've got these two young, fresh directors. So what was it like working, working with them? I think this was their, this was their first feature, right? This is the kind of the debut of, uh, was it Crazy Actors Productions or with the? Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah, you wouldn't have known it was their first. Um, they were so prepared, so passionate. Um, you know, I think for me as an actor, working with directors who have a clear vision um, and love the project that they're on, it makes you want to do everything you can to execute it so that they're happy. You know, <laughs> like you yeah. just, it's great to work for directors that you want to impress or you want to make happy or you want to, you know, get what they want. And, and that's what they did for me. Um, I just wanted to give my very best. I think we all felt that way. They were so passionate about the project before it got started um, that I think we all came into it really excited to execute it. Yeah, that's awesome. And I guess, how how was it, you know, filming with the directors who also were actors in the film? Uh, yeah. You know, did they give you, I mean, did you kind of explore your character or were you, was it kind of written in a way that you didn't have to do that? You just kind of felt like it, it was natural and yeah, you know, I mean, was, it was it like... Yeah. where it was very self-explanatory and easy to develop more from. Um, of course, we talked about things. It'd, it'd be funny, you know, I'd be in a scene with Megan or Tamara and the other would be behind the camera. So, so <laughs> we'd be sitting with the camera and we were talking, talking, talking and then Megan would be all cut and then Tamara would like run to the monitor. <laughs> so she'd be like on, like in the, you know, on stage, if you will, like with us and then be like, hey, be right back and then like go run and her and Megan would talk and then she'd run back into the scene and be like, okay, here's what we're going to do. It was really great. I mean, really having two directors on a project, I've never really worked that way before, but it's really helpful. Yeah. I mean, you get the notes right there. You know what I mean? There's no like yelling from the back or it was great. Yeah. And it must be really helpful, especially when the directors are also starring in it. Cause then you get, you know, I, I think they're, I think it's in inherent, like people, you know, you might either be more critical or less critical of yourself, but it's good to have like another objective view to kind of help direct you when you're also yeah. in the film, so. Yeah, yeah, agreed. Um, and, you know, we got to, talked about it a little bit already. I love how strong your character was. I think your character was one of the stronger ones. I mean, all the, they, they were all strong, but I think your character yeah. had a really clear vision. And there was one scene partway through, uh, you, you and another actor are kind of walking down a, a beautiful picturesque street. And there, you know, he makes a statement that I think in most Hollywood films, the, the film would go one way, you know, kind of maybe like more what people would expect, but your character kind of stayed true to her vision, stayed true to herself. And, and really, I loved that aspect of it. I loved how kind of sure you were um, mm -hmm. and, and your character was. So, you know, I think, I think that this, this film has a lot of really great examples of, of kind of personal strength and, and kind of coming to terms with, with life and, and, you know, yeah. people being strong, but also relying on others. So I think that that's... Yeah. Yeah, and I think that moment that you're talking about, I think for my character, it was a moment of not following her own dream for so long and then stepping out after, you know, it wasn't her choice to be single mm -hmm. um, and be a single parent 
And living in that world, of, it was six years that she's been a single parent and still following her own dream and kind of doing things for herself, by herself. I think at that point, she knows that she can do this on her own. And so to take someone back or to discuss a future, if it's not going to be on her terms, she doesn't need it anymore. Because I, you know, before that moment, before she was left, I think she did do that. She gave so much. And I think we can all relate to that. When you, you get to a point where you can only give so much and then you're just tired. You know, there's this yeah. meme that was that I saw recently. It's like sometimes you're not mad, you're not angry, you're just done. <laughs> <laughs> and like I think there's an element to Deirdre with that, that, you know, and I don't want to give away like the ending of yeah. the movie her character, but I think there's a lot of that with her where she's not mad, she's not angry. I think a lot of her was she had hurt, but she was just done. Yeah, and, and the writing and your delivery was just fantastic. Because I think, you know, you. kind of to the point, you mentioned, I think your character says something along the lines of, you know, if you had said this before, this is exactly what I wanted to hear. But now, like, I'm doing this. Like, this is, you know, it's, it's you're coming on my terms. I, I thought that that was such a, a good message and such a kind of a, a good character to kind of have out there in, in mm -hmm. you know, movies and, and drama and whatnot. Yeah, yeah, it's relatable, you know, yeah. because especially in a breakup, I'm sure we've been in one or two breakups in our life, you know, at some point, you, you, whether that's even just like a friend, but especially in, in, a, in a breakup where you're walking away from someone, there's always that like pain. And I think this movie speaks to what happens when you don't say something or when you hold on to something, you know, and, and we've all been there, you know, if only you would have said this or like, you're waiting for them to say, come back, you're waiting for them to say, let's fix this or whatever it may be. And then you move on, like you deal with the hurt and then you finally get over it and you move on. And it's really difficult for that same person to then expect you to just kind of go back. Yeah, exactly. Um, and, you know, one thing that's, that's easily apparent in this film. And one thing I love is you've got an all black female led film with just characters that feel you know as you said like realistic they're dealing with real problems but they're dealing with it in their own way i just recently reviewed a, a film it came out a bit ago but you know they, they released it digitally and it, it was another all-black film but you know i i, I kind of wrote like it feels like all the females in this movie are either conniving or are like you know kind of need their man to succeed and it right. just felt like a very kind of anti antiquated view and i think that this is I think it's getting better in Hollywood, but I think I a do. film like this is so important to kind of show, you know, what you can do when you kind of take a step back and really try to plan these characters out to be strong, you know, relatable yeah. and realistic. Yeah, I think, you know, myself, Nakia, Tamara, and Megan um, all feel personally as actresses that the stereotypes and things, I think all of us in our careers have kind of, I've really stayed away from them. Um, and I can only speak for me. I mean, that's been on purpose. Um, I think Tamara and Megan, and I'm so proud of them for doing it. They purposefully just made human beings. There wasn't any sort of caricature. You know, yes, we're black women, but like black women are people. You know what I mean? Like black women. <laughs> Surprise. Women, yeah. yeah, like we're all human beings. So yeah. to, to put a stereotype on top of it, it gets really tiring. It gets tiring to play, it gets tiring to watch. I think any minority can relate. Um, any sort of someone that might be an other in some sort of way can relate to just always being the same thing or always being assumed that that's how you act or that's how you talk because you're this. And I think that it's such a good job with writing and directing and casting, you know, not like as a pal back to me, but I just think the genuine heart and spirit of all of us as actors, as actresses that we don't want to play into stereotypes because it's just so not, it's not necessary. Yeah, and I think that that's definitely something that people are, you know, that Hollywood is slowly realizing, but, you know, it takes films like this to kind of show, you know, what you can do if you just kind of abandon all that and just say, look, yeah. like, like you said, we're just writing people. Right. They're dealing with problems. Yes, they're Black women. And yes, you know, they have normal life problems. And here's how they're going to deal with. This is just one example yeah. of it, so. And I credit Megan and, and Tamara for being the two black women that did it, you know? Um, I think that speaks volumes on what we want, what we want to see, what we want to play. Um, so it was really like an honor in that sense, particularly to be in this, because they really had that vision and they stuck to it and they cast it that way and they executed it that way where we're not playing a bunch of stereotypes or expectations or the victim, um, you know? So, that, so that's just something I really, credit them both for because it wasn't easy and I, I'm proud of them.
Yeah, no, definitely. And uh, proud of all of you. This is a, Thank you. this film, I, I kind of wrote uh, the, the reviews written and then it'll come out closer to when the movie is, but I kind of wrote that this film is kind of better than the sum of all its parts. It's like everything kind of comes together in a very beautiful, powerful way. You know, there's, there's some speeches partway through that I was just kind of watching. It's kind of like took notice and I, I like rewound mm -hmm. and rewatched them two or three times. And it's just such a, they're, they're simply done, but it felt, you know, very real, which uh, I liked. <laughs> Yeah, and I, I appreciate even you mentioning just the sum of all the parts because I think every character serves such a powerful purpose. I think every character pushed someone along mm -hmm. in the direction they needed to go to get to the place they needed to be, you know? Well, so awesome. So this uh, movie comes out next next year, early next year, January 8th. So you can kind of start 2021 off right. Hopefully. Oh my gosh. I love <laughs> next year. Oh my gosh. Exactly. Next year is my favorite phrase right now. There's still like two weeks. Who knows what could happen, but next year. You know, next, next year. We're ready, right? After yeah, exactly. All um, but you know, I guess what uh, what is next for you? What do you have uh, on the on the horizon after this film comes out and you're done promoting it? Yeah, after this comes out, I am I just worked on a show called Dave, um, which is on FFXX, -F say that 10 times back, <laughs> um, and Hulu. And they're working on their second season now. So I'll be in the second season of that. It's a really great show. Really great. Also another kind of um, culturally pushing show, which I'm excited about. Awesome. Well, yeah. that sounds perfect. Uh, sounds like you're, you're staying busy, which is fantastic to hear in, uh, in this time. And yeah. um, thank you. Yeah, thank you so much for joining me. You can check out thank Megan and, and the rest of this, you know, fantastic cast in If Not Now When, which releases January 8th. Yes. Thank you so much. Happy New Year. <laughs> <laughs> you too. <laughs> we made it. Well, well we hopefully, hopefully we'll yeah. check back in like two weeks, but we made it. <laughs> thank you so much. Take care. Thank you. Bye. Bye. That was Megan Holder, who plays D in the all-new drama If Not Now When. If Not Now When is coming to theaters, digital, and on demand on January 8th, so you can check it out right at the start of the next year. If you like this interview, please like and subscribe to this channel. It helps me out a lot to make sure all my new interviews go straight to you. And as always, please go to watcherpass.com for all your movie reviews, interviews, and recommendations. Thank you.